welcome you to the Jimmy V Women's Classic presented by Corona. Columbia, South Carolina is ready for this top 10 matchup. The number one team in the nation, undefeated South Carolina, hosting number eight, Maryland. Courtney Lyle alongside national championship winning head coach Carolyn Peck. Andrea Carter is on the sidelines. We could not be more stoked to watch these two teams play. Immediately, you're going to watch Peck, the battle inside. Aaliyah Boston is a preseason All-American. Oh, I think she's preseason candidate, top candidate for player of the year. Ever since the Buffalo game in the Bahamas, she has taken her game up to another level. Victoria Saxton with the tip, and she's going to be battling against Angel Reese down low, who was injured last season, but she is back and better than ever. South Carolina led by Aaliyah Boston down low. Zaya Cook also in there. Victoria Saxton and Leticia Ami here running the point for South Carolina's Destiny Henderson unavailable. Maryland in this zone, really trying to keep the ball from there in the paint, making tough twos for South Carolina. And here come the Maryland Terrapins. Angel Reese, a post with guard skills all the way to the rack. These are two teams that have been tested, two teams with experience, both squads returning all five starters. Maryland in a 3-2 zone. Just really trying to take away touches from Aaliyah Boston. That's the best way to give her the ball. You got to do it over the top. And the best way, if you're going to turn it over, throw it out of bounds because Maryland likes to get down the floor in transition. Maryland, this team has dealt with some injuries. The good news is we've got Katie Benzen back and also Faith Masonis coming off the bench. Those are two key pieces they did not have in that Bahamas trip over Thanksgiving. Well, when you have Katie Benzen, you can take Ashley Owusu off the ball and allow her to be more of a scoring threat. And also, Katie Benzen is a deadly three-point shooter. Katie Benzen, number 11 in that black jersey for the Terrapins. South Carolina will swing the basketball around. This is the fourth ranked opponent the Gamecocks have faced, but the first time they've done it at home. Zaya Cook, top of the key. Rebound into the hands of Reese and Ashley Owusu running things for Maryland. There's Katie Benson. See, South Carolina is going to play a strict man to man defense. You have to respect the shooters of Maryland, and that's going to open up those drive opportunities for Maryland. Here's a me here. Boston trying to work down low. She gets the ball. Kicks back out to Zaya Cook, who's a pretty solid shooter. Oh, in and out, but she's got her friend down there, Aaliyah Boston. Boston has been a fantastic player since she stepped foot onto campus for South Carolina, but her game's at another level this season. Owusu will battle. We'll see Owusu now not having to strictly stay at the top of the key, running the, running the offense. She has a big, strong body. She can go down and really take advantage of smaller guards. You see Ami here running the point for South Carolina. Victoria Saxton with the miss. What's the difference from Destiny Henderson to Leticia Ami here at the point? Speed, baby, speed. Destiny Henderson just takes the offense up to another level. Watch the defense around Aaliyah Boston in this zone. Whenever she catches the basketball, right here, you see four players around her. So Zaya Cook's got a spot up in the open area, but you see where Boston goes? She gets that backside rebounding position, so that's why she's there for the putback. Nobody's going to be surprised that Angel Reese is already at the free throw line because she gets there more than anybody in the nation. Well, she, again, we talked about, she does, she, was a wing coming out of high school. And then she had a growth spurt 
seventh or eighth grade because she was a point guard and then now she's a post and in the transition so she can use her body in so many different ways to get to the basket and her sophomore year in high school she switched from being a right-handed shooter to a left-handed shooter because she's double jointed in her right hand her shot her elbow was flying out so she just switched to her left and you make it sound like it was so easy for her too Here's Awusu again, trying to ta take Leticia Ami here. That's just too much length to try to go inside against. Awusu's more effective doing that against smaller guards. Yeah, Leticia Ami here is the longest wingspan on the South Carolina team. Victoria Saxton leapt all the way up and still kept her footing, but the ball goes out of bounds off of South Carolina. I was impressed with that body control. It was almost. The yoga move, she yeah. went down without hitting the floor and then had the strength to go back up with it. There's Bree Beal, they give it up to Boston in the high post. Lots of traffic. Ain't no problem for Aaliyah Boston. When Aaliyah Boston, the adjustment I've seen from her sophomore season to this season, when the double team comes, that doesn't mean that's a stop. She still has options to go score. Ashley Owusu trying to body up a me here in Boston. It's a tough challenge. Boston was trying to get her shoe on. It's still not all the way on her left foot. Her heel is out of the back of it. Bree Beal's shot bounces out. That, that zone for Maryland is doing exactly what Brenda Fries wants, force outside shots. And a block by Boston. She can affect both ends of the floor so easily. Check out Aaliyah Boston getting the ball at the free throw line area. She recognizes that she's got Katie Benson at the top of the zone. Even though there's defenders there, the power through, keeping both hands on the basketball to power it up and get the finish. South Carolina is going to sub out Victoria Saxton and bring in Camilla Cardoso, the transfer from Syracuse. So South Carolina just got bigger. That length Ooh. that they have inside. And Owusu trying to use that to her advantage as she drives in, draws a foul. That'll be the first on Brie Beal. This is going to be an interesting move because after the free throw, should Maryland make this free throw, Brenda Fries has called for full court pressure. Now you have Leticia Me here who is replacing Destiny, Destiny Henderson as the point guard. How will she handle that pressure? Wusu at the free throw line, an 86% free throw shooter. That one rattles out, misses them both. Well, you, can't, you can't set the press if you don't knock down your free throws. Cardoso to a meet here. Cardoso at the free throw line. Here's Mimi Collins. Angel Reese thinking about it. Patient on the move and draws the foul on Camilla Cardoso. Close ball game early on here in Columbia. We've got a top eight battle here in Columbia, South Carolina. Maryland with a one point lead over the number one team in the nation, Courtney Lyle and Carolyn Peck with you. And we are already intrigued by the battle that's gonna be inside between Angel Reese of Maryland and Aaliyah Boston, the preseason All-American for South Carolina. Well, you see that Maryland really focused on staying in that zone to keep the ball out of the hands of Aaliyah Boston because over the last two games, Aaliyah Boston's been averaging 25 points and 15 rebounds a game and shoot 90% but it has been Angel Reese for Maryland who has really forced the issue offensively. She has been in attack mode and she already has drawn a foul against Camilla Cardoso. 
Andrea Carter on the sidelines for us. How's it feeling out there, Drea? Listen, Courtney, I'm already feeling the intensity of the game. Angel Reese, she's smirking. There's a little bit of smack talk and just the physicality, especially between the post players down low. Physical box outs, they're checking each other on the cuts. You can tell this is an intense matchup and I feel it. Andrea, we're just about six minutes into this game and that's already happening. Exactly, but that's one thing that Don Staley mentioned is being physical with Maryland all throughout, especially on defense and I'm seeing it. You can count that bucket from Camilla Cardoso. She'll go to the free throw line. Cardoso at 6-7. I talked about her length as soon as she came in the game. Getting the offensive rebound over Angel Reese. Just going straight back up without over the back. And Angel Reese told me this morning the goal of her today was not to pick up that first foul in the first quarter and already done so with a little over five minutes in. And South Carolina definitely has the size advantage down low. It's so important that Angel Reese be smart with those fouls. Brenda Freeze has subbed her out, obviously, with that first foul. Look at the speed from Katie Benson. Benson, a super smart player. Her basketball IQ is high. She knows where everybody's supposed to be on the floor for Maryland. Well, you got to know she's smart. She played. Three season at Harvard. That'll do it. Oh, rejected by a me here. Already our fifth block by South Carolina. Now remember, Letitia a me here is playing point guard for <laughs> South Carolina, and she's blocking shots. That's a six-four point guard. Yeah, me here running the point as Destiny Henderson not available again today. Mimi Collins. Bust the three. Now that's what Maryland can do to you. Shoot the three. All five players on the floor are three-point threats. This Maryland team averages 84 points per game. That's ninth in the nation. Cardoso had to work. She was a little under the basket. Leah Wusu looking for some help. Cheyenne Sellers, the freshman number zero in the black jersey. Katie Benson threw it away into the hands of Zaya Cook. And Cook turned it right back over. Faith Masonis got on the floor and grabbed the basketball. Amy Collins, open, crushed it! Heat tick. American, um, Maryland can get out to a lead in a hurry. And remember, they've got two key players back, Katie Benson and also Faith Masonis. That helps with their depth, and they have just a couple games back for them. Well, and Rebecca Lobo talked about in studio transition points for Maryland. That's where they hang their hat. Letitia Meir and one. Brenda Freeze had a hot shooting Maryland team last season. They return all five starters from that team that won the Big Ten Tournament Championship this year. Ninth in the nation in points per game. Angel Reese, though, is demanding the basketball inside. Well, having her in the rotation this, ye this year and where defenses have to focus on an inside presence of Angel Reese, that opens up the perimeter shooters. Also, it's another added rebounder that really fuels that all gas, no break offense that Maryland has. Unfortunately, right now, Angel Reese, Reese on the bench with one foul early in this ball game. They're trying to protect her because she is so valuable. But Average that, is a double-double. That makes Maryland even harder to guard because now, really, truly, all five players on the floor are three-point threats. Owusu in trouble. Benson helps her out. Mimi Collins. Oh, and Zaya Cook, a big-time rebound. It is going to be South Carolina ball. Foul is on Cheyenne Sellers. Dawn Staley, the resume just keeps growing for the South Carolina program that she has built. They already have three top ten wins. Carolyn, none of those were at home. Yeah, well, you know why? Defense travels. And that's <laughs> one of the things that South Carolina has done really yes. well. This group. They really embrace their responsibilities on the defensive end of the floor. 
here. 12th in the nation in scoring defense, only allowing 49 points per game. 11th in the nation in field goal percentage defense. And first in blocks per game. Looks like Maryland now in a little triangle and two action defensively. And that'll be a travel on Letitia Me here. How is this going to affect her when Letitia Me here running the point is they're throwing jump defenses, different defenses at her. When you grow up being a point guard, you may have seen all these different type of defenses. When you've just been converted to a point guard since the Clemson game, there's going to be an adjustment period. But the one thing Don Staley, Staley talks about, Letitia Me here, she doesn't lack for confidence. She'll read the situation, learn from it. She'll get continually better as this game goes on. Destiny Henderson. We didn't see her go through a minimal shoot around today, but not available for this game. No timetable yet for her return for South Carolina. I think Destiny Henderson is the fastest player in the game this season. Sanaya Rivers in for the Gamecocks. The pull up. Cook got to it, a fresh 20. And Maryland now in a 2-3 defense. There's Boston on the elbow. Corner, Cook. Owusu pushing it. She's got Benson with her. Uh-oh, Ashley Owusu open. Rattles out. That was a good look, though. Thirty-five seconds left in the quarter. And a jump ball. It was Katie Benson guarding Leticia Me here. Possession arrow is pointing to South Carolina. And Reese staying vocal, cheering a team on, even though she's got to stay on the bench. You hear the crowd cheering because Lily Grissett has entered the game for the first time this season. She went down with an injury in the SEC tournament. One of the seniors last year decided to come back and we're seeing her for the very first time. Number 24 in white for South Carolina. And Lily Grissett is one of those players that will play physical. She can play multiple positions and she'll get on the glass. Oh, what a take! Sanaya Rivers, the freshman. Oh, she's a freshman? She definitely didn't play like that it. That was not a freshman move, and we got a tie game at 13. Maryland has only hit two of its last 10 shots. Owusu running out of time, running into traffic. Cardoso blocked. Exactly what you want, right? A top 10 matchup. We're tied after 10 minutes here in Columbia. Cancer uh, hit my family. My sister was diagnosed with leukemia, and we just didn't know how to handle it. The more information you equip yourself with, the better decisions that you can make. I called Coach, Coach K to, to find some doctors at Duke. I leaned heavily on Coach Hatchell at uh, UNC. After speaking to several cancer patients, they just said, go with who you feel comfortable with. We decided to go with Duke and my sister's alive and kicking and, and getting on everybody's nerves. Um, so that's a great thing. Unfortunately, cancer has affected, affected all of us, including Don Staley's family. Our partnership with the V Foundation highlights the need for cancer research and the elimination of racial disparities in cancer outcomes if you are able. Visit v.org slash donate to learn more and support. 100% of your donation goes to cancer research. And you heard Dawn talk about her sister Tracy's fight with cancer. And we're so glad that Tracy is doing well. Yeah, Tracy's sitting right down to our left here. She is cancer free after receiving a bone marrow transplant from her brother, Lawrence Staley. But it was because of research, the opportunity to know what needed to be done. That's why. Tracy Underwood, Don Staley's sister, is here with us today. We're so glad she is here. Front seat for a top 10 battle, too.
guys, I, guys, I talked to multiple players for South Carolina about Tracy and her fight and how it impacted them, and they all said it was incredible and it was inspiring. They also talked about how special it was to see Coach Staley give her energy to her sister and to the team. Every single day, she was always able to bring energy for everybody, and it meant a lot to them. Yeah, absolutely, that support system is so important. And of course, Don was going to be there for her sister. Uh, she's there for her sister, a, a colleague of ours, Tasha Butts, that's an assistant coach at Georgia Tech, yes. is battling with cancer, cancer as well. And talking to Don Staley today, she was telling me, just be sure and tell Tasha whatever she needs, however I can help, she is right there in her corner. Huge support system. There's Tracy wearing that camo jacket on the front row here at the South Carolina Maryland game. And you think Don Staley talks a lot? What I'm told oh. is that her sister Tracy talks more than Don does. Okay, but Don told us that. We got to verify the source <laughs> there. It you might can't be a give up biased. everything. <laughs> Zaya would disagree, guys. Oh. She told me that Don and Tracy are actually the exact same person. <laughs> okay. We have a third party's opinion. Well, Leah Boston was just called for her first foul. Angel Reese is back out on the floor for Maryland, number 10 in black. She picked up a foul in that first quarter, and Brenda Freeze brought her over to the bench to protect her. Lily Grissette. Her second bucket. First lead for South Carolina. Katie Benson, great three, just in time for Maryland. Here waiting on the screen from Grissette. Into the hands of Chloe Bibby, Angel Reese, all the way down the floor. Kind of a weird shot going up. I told you, unorthodox. Well, yeah. That's it. Against the zone, the ball reversal. Keep an eye on Lily Grissette right there and how she positions. Once the ball is swung, from weak side to strong side and knows that she has that lane to drive the baseline behind the zone and get the easy two. It got loud in here when Lily Grissette entered the game. If you're just joining us, this is the first time we have seen her since she went down with that injury in the SEC tournament back in March. Well, you understand that this is a senior who has accepted her role when that number one recruiting class came in. Lily Grissette could have been upset that she wasn't in the starting line lineup. Was she? No. She just said, whatever coach you need me to do, she got herself in great shape back on and was a perimeter player. Now you see she's able to rotate inside the paint. She really reads the zone. Her experience is valuable to South Carolina. Ten seconds on the shot clock. They swing it around to Zaya Cook. And Zaya Cook has hit 1,000 points for her career. Zania Sellers stolen away by Rivers. And the lay in. There's a travel on Angel Reese. You got to credit. Bree Beal understands a higher three-point shooter is Zaya Cook. Make that extra pass, and Cook knocks it down. And then what does South Carolina do but build their confidence off their defense? Look, Zaya Rivers, she knew the assignment. Saniya Rivers. Got it. But she knew the assignment. She did. There's Saniya Rivers again to Bree Beal for three. Okay. Check that. <laughs> <laughs> That's an 8 0 run for Carolina. 
Angel Reese picked the pocket of Zaya Cook. Up and under Boston. The, de the defense of the center for Maryland waiting at half court on the by ham ball handler. Pick the pocket and go get the finish. Angel Reese with 10 points for Maryland to lead the Terrapins. She's three of six from the field. Angel Reese has been averaging 19 points and over 10 rebounds a game. Letitia and me here, over two defenders in and out. Check this out. This is your center that is at half court, waiting defensively, picks the pocket of Zaya Cook, and then heads the other direction. I talked about that unorthodox, unorthodox game. Well, with a scoop shot underneath, she's either going to get the finish or get herself to the free throw line. Well, Brenda Freeze told us they still consider her a freshman because she missed 14 games last year with a foot injury, didn't have that consistency of training, and didn't have a preseason before last year because of COVID. A little short on the step back for Angel Reese. Reese is one of just three players in D1 basketball, averaging over 18 points per game, over 10 rebounds per game, and shooting 55% from the field. Did you see the way she handled the basketball? Angel Reese between her legs, little pearl action at the top, but then Brenda Freese told her as she's coming down the floor, drive it to the basket. will take a seat. 10 points for Angel Reese, just one foul. Important to note, they need her on the floor. Sanaya Rivers, way too much. Maryland trailing by four. Chloe Bibby, she is definitely a threat from behind the arc. Both these teams like to get up and down the floor in transition. Blocking foul on Bibby. South Carolina up by six here in the second quarter. I'm enjoying the conversation with Rebecca and Nikki and talking about what South Carolina has done as far as coming in off the bench. Lily Grissett really made her presence felt instead of just trying to get things around the perimeter or force inside to the post. And then the defense. Really blocking shots inside. Uh, the good, the bright spot for Maryland has been Angel Reese. She has 10 points. The rest of their team, 11 points. Reese back in the game. She's three of seven from the field. We've already seen some of those unorthodox shots and the things that she can do to get around the size of Aaliyah Boston down low. Well, she plays like a guard and able to handle the ball so well. And you know, her brother is a player at the University of Maryland. Yeah, I think, Andrea, you've got more on how they used to battle, right? Uh, absolutely. Angel told me that her and her brother Julian, who is a freshman on Maryland's team, they had a goal in their yard when they were younger, a basketball goal, but they ended up having to get it taken down because they were fighting too often when they were playing one-on-one. -on -one. Angel grew up playing with her brother, play playing in the streets of Baltimore, and she said that's where her competitive spirit comes from. I can't get over this photo, too. How cute. Do you ever have basketball taken away, Peck? Were you getting too competitive? Oh, no, but I have two <laughs> brothers that I played against, and it was like, don't come in here crying. My parents would yeah. say, look, <laughs> you just go out there and figure it out. Reese got a hand in there, comes out with the basketball. Angel Reese gives it up to Faith Masonis. Good transition point for Maryland. Brenda Freeze told us that would be important. If they can score in the first five seconds, they'll take it. And when you have a center that is 6'3", that can pick up a loose basketball, bring it and make the decision of when to keep it, when to give it up, that makes you effective in transition. Swing it to Beal, eight seconds on the shot clock, looking for her second three of the night, won't get it. Ami here with the rebound. South Carolina is a fantastic rebounding team. They rebound 45% of their misses. That's first in the nation. And that's a travel. 
Well, we've got a top 10 women's basketball matchup for you over on ESPN2 and the app number four. Stanford is in Knoxville to take on the undefeated number nine Lady Vols. They renew this rivalry after the year off due to COVID. The Cardinal have won the last two, but they have split the last six meetings. I'm looking for the matchup. Cameron Brink going against Tamari Key. And who would have thought that Tennessee would be playing as well as they are without Ray Burrell? Well, the good news is, Kelly Harper said this week they expect to know either this week or very soon a timetable for Ray Burrell's return. So that's great news if you're a Lady Ball fan. You add that to the way Jordan Horston has been playing for the Lady Balls. Pretty Kelly dangerous. Harper, that'll be a happy Christmas present yeah. <laughs> for Kelly Harper. Second foul called on Bree Bill. It sends Ashley Owusu to the free throw line. Drops it in. Awusu and Angel Reese, two of the best for the Maryland Terps to be able to get to the free throw line. That's where they pay it off. And Ashley third in the nation and free throws made. I'm talking to Brand Brenda Freeze about Faith Basonis said she's the heart and hustle. She and Katie Benz in there. She got the offensive putback. Zaya Cook drives and pulls up. Cardoso. It's nice to have those long arms in there if you're South Carolina. That length is just tough to deal with when you're playing against South Carolina. Nine offensive boards. It's like a volleyball game down there. Uh-oh, Cook. Yeah! led most of the first quarter. Their largest lead was five, but South Carolina has taken over since Lily Grissett came in and got a couple buckets in that first quarter towards the end. Sanaya Rivers just right into traffic, but nowhere to go. Owusu pulls up and pops. Ashley Owusu has got five. That's how Maryland's going to get back in this game, just capitalizing on South Carolina's mistakes. South Carolina take an ill advised shot or turn the ball over. Awusu is going to make you pay going the other direction. Cook in the short corner. Cardoso. Oh, Katie Benson just went up and took it from her. Bibby missed the layup. Watch Aaliyah Boston call for the ball at the top. She knows the defense is going to pay attention to her, and Zia Cook slips into the slot and knocks it down. But then coming back in transition, Ashley Owusu is going to make the opponents pay in transition if you don't pick her up. She just picked up her second foul, though, so Ashley Owusu on the bench for Maryland. They have brought in the freshman Cheyenne Sellers, who has gotten some more playing time with this Maryland team because Diamond Miller is still out. Well, and Brenda Fries talked about Cheyenne Sellers and how she went to her late in the Rutgers game, and Cheyenne likes to play in those pressure moments. She loves that, and with Diamond Miller being out, this freshman is getting some valuable opportunity. And so there's Sellers, number zero in that black jersey for the Maryland Terrapins, under a minute to go in the half. Angel Reese working on Boston. What was that? What was that? She's rewriting the book on fundamentals. Whoa! <laughs> 12 points. That's the thing that makes her so hard to guard. Like I said, she's gone to her left hand. She went to that in her sophomore season. And so now, do you take away a left shoulder, right shoulder? You don't know. Cook creating her shot, getting to the basket. 20 seconds left. Zaya Cook's got 10. Yeah, Maryland's got to go. Ball screen action involved Angel Reese. Yeah. 
Sellers stuck in the paint. And South Carolina's defense holds the Gamecocks up by four at the half. They've had to hold on because Maryland has made their runs, but Zia Cook making shots and picking the zone apart allowed them to have a four-point lead. Andrea Carter is with Don Staley. Coach Staley, going against the junk defense and the zone defense, what's important for your team offensively in the second half? Um, we just need to simplify. But before that, I want to send my, 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 my uh, prayers out to Tasha Butts. I know we play this game, and there's much more on the line than this game. But we're going to enjoy it. But hopefully Tasha Butts out there. Let's link up. Let's pray for her and make sure that she's going to be okay. And that's most important, Coach. Enjoy the second half. Thank you. South Carolina with a four-point lead as the teddy bear toss has started here in Colonial Life Arena. Let's get you to the studio with Kelsey, Rebecca, and Nikki. Columbia, South Carolina, number one, South Carolina on top of number eight, Maryland, but just by four points. It was a great first half. Courtney Lyle, Carolyn Peck, Andrea Carter also with us. Look, Aaliyah Boston only had four points for South Carolina in that first half, but she's doing a lot more than scoring right now to help South Carolina get on the board. She is attracting a lot of attention. The goal for Maryland was to try to keep Aaliyah Boston from getting the ball inside. So you watch, every time it was an option for Aaliyah Boss to come inside, not one, not just two, but all five players are focused on where Aaliyah Boston is getting the basketball and the court shrunk. Well, Zaya Cook stayed out on the perimeter and that allowed her to be open. She missed the shot, but Boston is inside for the putback. And then again, once Aaliyah Boston got it at the top of the key, you see how the defense of Maryland shrinks in and Zaya Cook slips right into the open area and is able to bury the three. South Carolina leads by four, but for Maryland, it was Angel Reese, 12 points for Angel Reese, four of eight shooting, and she made some amazing shots in that first half. Andrea Carter caught up with Brenda Freeze, the head coach of Maryland. Yeah, when I talked to Brenda coming out of halftime, she said she really likes what the team did on defense. She wants South Carolina to take and make outside shots. On the offensive end, she said they have to execute better outside of Angel Reese, making the extra pass, making harder cuts. But her biggest emphasis, guys, was rebounding. She said we're minus 10 on the glass. We have to make them get one and done. And we also have to crash the offensive glass as well. Yeah, and Andrea, that's what Brenda Freeze told us going into this meeting. Rebounding would be the biggest thing because South Carolina Carolina Peck is a great rebounding team. Well, they have tremen tremendous length, and then you've got players like Victoria Saxon that has a tremendous vertical leap and has a nose for the basketball. So how do you battle that? You've got to check out. You've got to box. Put a body on somebody and keep them off the glass. South Carolina gets the ball first. Letitia and me here, they're looking for Boston down low. Her and Victoria Saxon both working hard through this Maryland defense. There goes Boston around Reese. Too much on the shot, gets her own board. Aaliyah Boston, it took a second, but she got the bucket. Didn't panic. She didn't panic. Stayed composed and really showed great patience. Important to note, Ashley Owusu for Maryland does have two fouls as Katie Benson hits a big time three out of the locker room. Katie Benson shoots the three like it's a layup. Boston answers. I told you after that Buffalo game in the Bahamas, Don Staley challenged Aaliyah Boston and said, you need to do more. I'm sure that she has had that same conversation with her at halftime of this game because she has come out focused. She's already matched her point total from the first half. Angel Reese, she was the leading scorer in that first half with 12. Tied up in the South Carolina defense, and Leticia Ami here on the move. Bree Beal stepping into the three. Got her teammate, Victoria Saxton, to put it up and in. When South Carolina goes quick strike, quick shot going up, you, if you're Maryland, everybody has to be accountable for each white jersey to box out. Ashley Owusu, baseline. 
Wow, both teams coming out hitting their shots out of the locker room. Well, you want it when you come out first four, four minutes, first two minutes in that third quarter, each team is trying to dominate and dictate the start of this second half. And me here in trouble. She picked up her dribble, needs somebody to come get the basketball. It's Peel. Oh! That stopped real quick. Angel Reese took a hand in there. Katie Benson, uh-oh! Crushed it! Nine points for Katie Benson. I mean, you see how electric she can make this Maryland team. I mean, it's like she has a radar unit connected to the basket when she's behind the three-point line. One ping only. That's all you need. And there's a travel by Bree Beal. Maryland's defense rotating over. They're trying to shut down the paint. Angel Reese on the deny. And then Katie Benson, she doesn't need but just a little flicker of light. Distance, she's able to knock down the three. Carolyn, we were talking at halftime about the pace of this game. Do you think it favored South Carolina in that first half? In the first half, it did. Right now, in the second half, both teams are going to have to execute in the half court and stop turning the ball over. Mimi Collins tied up at 40. Boston's going. Gets fouled before the shot happens by Collins. Now, I know Maryland is in great shape, but here's something that I'm watching for because Maryland, after they score, they're trying to get into a press. That really takes a lot out of you because Maryland doesn't go very deep on their bench. Maybe two players. So now what will Maryland, if they keep this pace up, woohoo, what a finish by Boston. But what will Maryland look like in the fourth quarter? And will depth play a factor in this one? Benson pulls it back out. Bibby to the SEC logo. Boston and Reese. It comes down to Angel Reese. No shot. I love the battle between those two big girls inside, Reese and Boston. Bree Beal. A couple times short, she will go to the free throw line. Bree Beal got two offensive rebounds in one position. If that is, if I'm Brenda Freeze, I'm upset with my team. One shot, yes, not two. So that foul was on Chloe Bibby. That's her second. Tuesday night, just one college basketball game on ESPN. Should be a good one. Jaden Shackelford leads the balanced attack of number nine Alabama against Penny Hardaway's Memphis Tigers. Our coverage starts at 9 Eastern. And like everything else, it's available on the ESPN app. Alabama beat Houston yesterday. Kind of a controversial call at the end. It was a one-point win for Alabama. Before that game, they had upset Gonzaga. Russo. Can't finish. South Carolina up by three here in the third. Gamecocks playing their fourth ranked opponent, their fourth top ten opponent this year. They've beaten them all so far. Victoria Saxton. South Carolina has tremendous post play. Well, Andrea Carter said Brenda Freeze addressed rebounding with her team. So far, Maryland not boxing out. 16 offensive rebounds for South Carolina. <laughs> Zaya Cook, there's just a mentality to get to the basket right now for the Gamecocks. Seven straight points for South Carolina. They're up 47-40.
South Carolina has played a very tough schedule. They've already faced three ranked opponents, and guess what? Three W's against all three of those. And three were away from home. Now they get to come home, play Maryland, but then they've got to go to Duke before they return home to play against Stanford. Yeah, so South Carolina, not just the number one team and undefeated, but they are well tested. They're well tested, and they are giving this crowd something to play for. Over the last seven seasons, South Carolina has led the nation in attendance. And looking at this crowd today, after going through what we all had to endure last season with the COVID pandemic, to be able to come back and watch this team play in person is a special treat. Yeah, South Carolina calls them the fams, and they are making a difference for sure. Andrea, have you noticed the crowd? How has it influenced this game? I've definitely noticed the crowd, their energy. I think the biggest thing with South Carolina fans, and I felt it in my final years playing against these fans, they cheer for the little things. They cheer for an offensive rebound. They cheer for a hustle. They cheer for help side, and that pulls for this team and helps them get going. You're exactly right, because when Bree Bill made a play off the bounce, even like you could hear the crowd go, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> she wasn't able to finish the layup, but they appreciated the move. Oh, they're into it. They're locked in on every single play. South Carolina still with a seven point lead, looking for their fourth top 10 win of the season. This is our Jimmy V Classic game, and unfortunately, Brenda Freeze and her family have been impacted by cancer. This is Tyler at age two back in 2010. He was diagnosed with childhood leukemia. Good news is Tyler is cancer free now, but her father, Bill, has been fighting prostate cancer since March. You see his wife, Donna, there with him, and that net draped around his neck is the net when they won the Big Ten tournament. Brenda took it over and draped it around her father's neck and what an emotional moment that was. During V Week and of course this Jimmy V Classic Games, we're focusing on the fight against cancer and the need for research. If you are able, we ask you please visit v.org slash donate to learn more and support. 100% of your donations go to cancer research. I'm talking to Brenda Freeze before the game and talking about her dad Bill. He was given six years, six months to a year, and he has celebrated 100 days past. And, All right, Bill. Yeah, and he said that on his 90th birthday, he's 89, he wants to have 90 candles on his cake. And we will get him those. You got that right. And Bill and I, we share the same birthday. So January 22nd, Bill Freeze, we're going to wish you a happy birthday. Today is 102 days past that six month time frame they gave Bill, and we are thinking about you, Bill, for sure. Still now, Maryland, after a score, they're getting into that zone defense. Will they have the legs to make a run to finish the third or in the fourth quarter? Carolyn, you talk about if they'll have the legs later. Earlier in the quarter, in a huddle, Coach Freeze told the team, hey, we got tired, and they all agreed, but they all agreed that they have to push through. So I do think the press and the tempo that they're playing at is wearing on them so far. And how do you combat that, Dre? You know this is a player. You got to talk to each other. You got to convince each other that you're not tired and just dig in. I will say that in every Maryland huddle, there is a ton of energy. Katie Benson is loud. Diamond Miller is screaming at everyone. Hey, they went on our run. They went on their run. Let's go on our run. Still a lot of high energy, even if they are tired in the huddle. Yeah, it does help, too. They've got some veteran players on this Maryland roster who know what it's been like, is like to be in these tough games, these close battles. Well, Katie Benson is a player that doesn't get tired. They, Maryland has required a lot from Angel Reese, somebody else has got to step up and help Reese contribute some points. Well, that was going to be a big bucket from Cheyenne Sellers. It went in and then popped right back out. Do you see Aaliyah Boston handling the basketball right now? I love now? it. I was reading an article on Aaliyah Boston on the way over to the arena today, not while I was driving, but it was from 2018 when she was 
working as a high school player, and she went to USA Basketball tryout. Leah Boston got cut from her first USA Basketball tryout, and she noticed the other post players. They had ball handling skills. They were able to shoot with some range, and so she went and worked on that. This is as a high schooler, back way before her time, before she had decided to come to South Carolina. And hey, how about all of the accolades she has already received in the first two years of her career? She wasn't satisfied. That's a good finish by Masonis, but she wasn't finished. So you know what she did this summer? She went and sought out Tim Duncan. Wow. To really find out ways to make her game better. There's nobody better in a post game to really understanding footwork, to really of how she could become an even more impactful center in this game. Carolyn, I talked to Aaliyah Boston about her time with Tim Duncan, and she said the biggest lesson from him was patience. He told her, if you don't know what you're going to do, don't rush because the defense doesn't know either. Take your time, make your reads. And she said she has so much confidence in her ability to figure out what she wants to do and then get it done against the defense. Talking this to uh, Don Staley, she said it was to learn stop and go so that you understood that uh, being unpredictable when opponents face you. That worked with Tim Duncan, and then also she got after it in the weight room. A vast improvement in several areas of her strength and conditioning for Aaliyah Boston, and it's showing up on the court. You can look the way that she moves, the way she runs the floor. She's quicker now than she was in her first two seasons. There's a foul down low on Mimi Collins. Look at the numbers last season compared to this season. What an improvement for Boston. Look at the vertical getting up off the floor and then sprinting. And this is in comparison. I think Leticia and me here was the fastest player on the court. Then you have Destiny Henderson and then you have Aaliyah Boston. Wow. Love it. Yeah. You know Don Staley does. And that bucket right there puts Aaliyah Boston at 1,000 for her career. You guys are talking about how she got in shape and got stronger, and Aaliyah told me she feels it getting up and down the court, but she feels it the most on her post-ups. She said, I'm way more on balance, and then when I catch the ball, I don't have to catch my breath. I can just make my move, and that's where she feels being in shape the most on the court. Well, and she now has a 1,000 points along with Zaya Cook, but I can relate. Drea, as a post player, sometimes that's when you have to rest after you fought to get positioning. And when she's in that kind of great shape, she can mentally think about taking advantage of the defense, reading early, whether it's on the high side, low side, behind. And she, Leah Boston does a terrific job of those reads. Lily Grissett has checked back in for South Carolina. Gamecocks up by four. I asked Dawn before the game if Lily was going to play, and she said, well, that's a probable. Now, you know Dawn Staley is an avid spades player. So if she says, I got 13 <laughs> and a possible, you're feeling real strong about your hand. <laughs> Under a minute to go here in the third quarter, Ashley Wusu. Oh, and who will they call this foul on? Was it Boston coming over the top? Yes, it will be on Aaliyah Boston, and that will be her second. Twelve points, five blocks for the preseason All-American, and she will be subbed out. Leticia Mihir replaces her. Angel Reese at the line. She's the leading scorer for Maryland today. 16 points. Reminder, we've got a top 10 women's basketball matchup over on ESPN2 and the app on Saturday. Number four, Stanford is on Rocky Top to take on the undefeated number nine, Lady Vols. They renew this rivalry after a year, a year off due to COVID. Our coverage starts at 5.15 Eastern, 2.15 Pacific. Well, Maryland bringing the pressure. But once you get a player trapped in the corner right across half court, you can't let them out. Zaya Cook runs right into Angel Reese. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Bree Beal. Lily Grissett went up for the rebound and drew the foul. 
she'll go to the line. The toughness from Lily Grissett. This is an experienced player that comes in the court. Look, she's already anticipating the shot and jockeying four positions. Goes up strong with two hands, snatches it out of the air. She says, that's mine. That foul was on Faith Masonis, her second. First one goes in for Lily Grissett. Bree Hall in the game for South Carolina. She's guarding Ashley Owusu with the ball right now. 16 seconds. Owusu can get to the basket quick. And that'll be a foul on Bree Hall. Did you see anything there? I guess it was a the hand check, putting two hands. I didn't see anything different that hasn't been happening the whole game. So Maryland will sub Angel Reese back in the ball game. Nine seconds left. Owusu trying to shake Hall. Reese is stopped. Sonia Rivers from half court. South Carolina gets the stop. The Gamecocks have the lead. Ten minutes to play in Columbia. We're here in Columbia, South Carolina, and Maryland trails by four. They've gotten just about everything they could possibly get out of their post player, Angel Reese. She said it inside, outside, and also on defense. It's going to have to be Ashley Awusu who becomes the Robin to the Angel Reese being Batman if the Maryland Terps expect to knock off the number one team in the country. Last time that Maryland beat a number one team was in 2006 when they beat North Carolina in the final four, went on to win the national championship that year. Aaliyah Boston has just been the backstop for the South Carolina defense. Made it really tough for any driving action happening to the rim. Lusu tries on the baseline. South Carolina has been dominating the rebounding battle as well. 47 to 26 in favor of the Gamecocks. Now South Carolina has Zaya Cook running the point with a me here on the bench. Good ball movement and getting the ball inside to Leah Boston. Boston now over 1,000 points for her career. She matched it and now she's at 1,002. Bibby fouled by Sanaya Rivers. That'll be her first. But as soon as the pass goes to the wing, you see Aaliyah Boston come off a screen from Lily Grissett, kind of curl around. That gives her the inside position on the defense. And then the patience, Carolyn, Again. we talked about. Absolutely. Learning from Tim Duncan. You know, when you have a player that plays with great, great pace like Aaliyah Boston, you can't speed her up then She's able to pick apart when she wants to score. Zaya Cook will set up the offense for South Carolina. Boston high post, Bree Hall on the block. Offensive foul on Bree Hall, her second personal. Well, that was terrific rotation by Katie Benson to go down. When the help came over to take over to cover Aaliyah Boston, Benson then rotates down, gains position, and is able to draw the charge. Benson is such a headsy player. I think this is a player, don't, Regardless of her size, I think she has a future playing at the next level. What's the next step for her game in order to do that? Well, she's already got the smarts, high basketball IQ, and she has a specialty. She can shoot 
the three-point shot like it's a layup, and that's what a lot of GMs are looking for and coaches in the WNBA. Can you put the ball through the hoop and especially shooting the three-point shot? Third foul on Bree Hall puts Ashley Owusu at the free throw line. Got the first. Tuesday night, a reminder, just one college basketball game here on ESPN. Should be a great one. Jaden Shackelford leads a balanced attack for number nine, Alabama, against Memphis. Our coverage starts at 9 Eastern, 8 Central. Also available on the ESPN app. Now keep an eye on what Maryland is doing. They are creeping back into this game, getting closer and closer by getting to the free throw line. Maryland first in the nation in free throws made this season. Zaya Cook just ran right into Mimi Collins. Bibby taking the baseline, blocked by Lily Grissett. Jump ball, possession arrow to Maryland. Lily Grissett just digging down defensively. She got beat and recovered from behind with the block. Grissett entered this game with about 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. The first time all season we have seen her. First time we've seen her since that injury in the SEC tournament in March. Now, South Carolina's got to adjust because Maryland has gone out of the zone to a man-to-man -man defense. 10 seconds for the Gamecocks. Sanaya Rivers elevates. Rebound by Boston. Oh, in and out into the hands of Reese. And Angel Reese has to stop midcourt. I thought it might be a cramp when I first saw it but they're taking her off the court. Just as she's coming down the floor. I can't really tell. Yeah, I'm not sure. Second look at it. But Angel Reese over on the Maryland sideline. Giving her Gatorade. Maryland's going to really need her back in this ball game. And we'll see if Andrea can work on an update for us as they look at Angel Reese. on the floor, Brie Beal just picked up her fourth foul. Victoria Saxton checks back in. Owusu at the free throw line. Maryland shooting 63% from the free throw line today. They're normally a 76% free throw shooting team on the season. And they have 17 free throw attempts to South Carolina's 11. Tied up at 53, six straight points for Maryland. Well, and that is because they're attacking the basket. They're not just relying on trying to hit jump shots, but attacking and either coming out with a bucket or getting to the free throw line. Boston had the ball knocked out of her hands. Owusu trying to get Maryland the lead back. Leah Boston is matched up with Katie Benson. Faith Masonis, she's going to the basket. And Maryland back on top for the first time since the nine minute mark in the second quarter. You check out with the Leah Boston matched up with Katie Benson at the top of the key. What does that do right here at the top? Then that allows driving lanes for Maryland. 
and Masonis took full advantage. They're still working on Angel Reese over on the Maryland sideline. She was just carried off the court. It's been eight straight points for the Terps to take back the lead. South Carolina has led by as many as seven today. Sanaya Rivers only has one made three on the season. Offensive foul on the screen. Let's check in with Andrea. Yeah, guys, we saw Angel Reese get carried off the court, but from what I could tell, it was just cramps. They gave her Gatorade and then put extra electrolytes in the Gatorade. She's been jumping up and down, jogging on the sidelines. Looks like she's good to go. Yeah, that's a good sign. She is so important. And she's their leading scorer with 17 points today. Out of bounds off of South Carolina. Maryland started this game and went to the zone. They let South Carolina get comfortable figuring out the zone and then switch to a man-to-man. -man. South Carolina has not made the adjustment of being able to execute their offense, their man-to-man -man offense, and able to get shots. And now it's given time for Angel Reese to be back in the game for Maryland. How much does that have to do with their point guard, Destiny Henderson, being out? Oh, that's tremendous. That's a great point, Courtney, because Henny was one that, regardless of what defense you're in, she, she's able to force the issue and pick up the speed and really go by you off ball screens and make things happen. Usually she requires two people when teams play them in a man-to-man -man that then opens up either Boston or the kick out for open shooters. Destiny Henderson not available again. She is out with an undisclosed injury. Saw her a little bit in warm-ups and shoot around today. No timetable just yet for her return. Zaka Cook will take that bounce. Cook hit her 1,000th career point earlier in this game. So did her teammate, Aaliyah Boston. Well, she's going to have to stay steady down the stretch because it's going to have to rely on Aaliyah Boston, Zaya Cook, because for Maryland, Angel Reese and Ashley Awusu have been aggressive and either scored or gotten to the free throw line. Here comes Awusu. We're tied at 55. Benson fell down, and the ball into the hands of Cook. Layup! Brenda Freeze wanted a foul called on that last steal. Maruso steps back and can't hit. And I think Aaliyah Boston just said her leg cramped. She's slow to get back down the court, and she's raised her hand and looked over at Dawn Staley. <laughs> Offensive foul out of me here. Zaya Cook got the defense off and running the other direction. She's got to fill in strong because right now, South Carolina's got to play without hitting, and they're in control. Well, the end of last season is one that South Carolina will not forget. They lost by a point to Stanford in the Final Four. But they've used that as motivation. Every player on this roster and their head coach, Don Staley, have gone back to work to just get a little bit better, one point better every single day. And Aaliyah Boston, she just hates to review that because it was an offensive putback, and she takes a lot of responsibility for that. But Don Staley turned it into a positive and said, Aaliyah Boston, because of you, we were in that position to possibly have an opportunity to win. So you've got to just continue to build and improve as a player, and you'll have that opportunity to play for a national championship. And look what they have done already this season. They have beaten three top 10 opponents all away from home, and here they are with a chance to add a fourth to their resume and keep that undefeated record. Well, right now, South Carolina has Maryland in the bonus, so every time they foul, they're going to the free throw line. So I can guarantee you, Brittany Freeze has every offensive action going to the basket. So they're either going to get the two or they're going to get those chances at the charity strike. 
And again, Maryland first in the nation in free throws made. That one bounces off the iron. And now South Carolina, what they need to do is they have got to spread the floor. They need to get ball reversal. Then they can get high, low action to Victoria Saxon or to Aaliyah Boston. 10 seconds on the shot clock. There you go. There's your high, low look. And Aaliyah Boston's going to draw the foul. Well, what they do? They went side to side, made the defense shift, and then that allowed Victoria Saxon to get the ball in the middle of the floor. When she gets it in the middle of the floor, when you have Aaliyah Boston down low, she can pass it where nobody else can get it but Aaliyah Boston and give her those opportunities. Third foul called on Faith Masonis. South Carolina only shooting 57% from the free throw line tonight. Boston's got another double-double on the season, her fourth. Maryland with the ball trailing by two. See, this is a tough matchup because Owusu, you've got to respect the shot. She can also, she's strong enough to take you down and either cause you to foul or she's going to finish. Ashley Owusu with 11 points. She's won two players for Maryland in double figures. I bet you can guess the other one, Angel Reese. Tania Rivers. Put back, Victoria Saxton. That was a pass. Okay. <laughs> but Maryland had switched up their defense and gone to a zone. Sa Sa Victoria Saxon is always going to put herself in the position to get rebounds. Boston comes out with the ball. So Zaya Cook runs things. We saw Letitia and me here start this game at point guard. Skip pass to me here. You like the shots right now for South Carolina? No, I, and I think you could have gotten deeper in the shot clock. Because if you shoot it too soon, Katie Benson can get you, get Maryland in this game. Oh, Cook shot rattles out. She gets fouled anyway. That foul will be on Katie Benson, her third. Any foul from here on out, no matter shooting or not, we're going to take a couple shots. Both teams in the bonus. Well, but neither team shooting it red hot from the free throw line. Maryland at 65%, South Carolina at 60. Coming up on Saturday, top 10 women's basketball matchup over on ESPN2. Number four, Stanford and Knoxville to take on the number nine, Lady Vols. Coverage starts at 515 Eastern, 215. Pacific. And he pins him with the hustle to get that board. 2.20 left in the game. Angel Reese working on Boston, and she gets the foul in the bucket. I talked about the unorthodox play. That's how Brenda Freeze describes her. And going to the basket and to the left on Aaliyah Boston, she is able to get the finish and draw the foul for the opportunity to complete the three-point play. Carolyn, when I talked to Angel Reese earlier this week, she told me there were times last season when she felt like she was forgotten about because she couldn't be on the court with her team. She said she wants to go hard, not just to prove what she can do to everyone else, but to show her teammates that she is there for them always. Well, she's also set an example for Diamond Miller, who is out right now, that is really working on getting herself back on the court. Angel Reese shows a lot of maturity as a sophomore in her leadership qualities that she's demonstrated. And you got to have confidence to go up against Aaliyah Boston. No fear shown in Angel Reese tonight. Look, grabs a rebound out of her hands. 90 seconds left. 
Maryland looking for its second ranked win of the season. For South Carolina, it would be their fourth. Amy Collins in and out. Rebounding, rebounding and free throws gonna decide this ball game. And South Carolina has been winning that rebounding battle 56 to 32. Timeout, South Carolina, we step aside, but only for 30 seconds, close game in Columbia. Close game, a minute four on the clock, South Carolina ball. Well, with 20 seconds left on the clock, they need to, Dawn needs to be real specific of where she wants the shot to come from so that the other four players on the floor can jockey for offensive rebound positioning. If they get the offensive rebound, telling her team, kick it back out because you've got a reset on the shot clock. Now, for Maryland, Maryland doesn't have to foul right now. If they can get a stop, they either get a steal or a rebound. Now, they can come down because it's just a two-point game, and they don't need to rush, don't need to panic. And I'm sure that Brenda Freeze may use one of her timeouts to really get good execution and use some shot clock and then put her team in a position for offensive rebound if need be. Letitia Amie here with the basketball for Carolina. Leah Boston at the high post. Sees a lane. Short on the bucket, Saxton. The hustle and gets the foul call as Saxton was going after the rebound. The call is on Cheyenne Sellers, her second. Well, this is a great shot, drawing it up for the All-American candidate for player of the year. Going to Aaliyah Boston. She didn't able to finish, but she's got Victoria Saxton that was right there to play cleanup. 23 offensive rebounds for South Carolina. Victoria Saxton has seven of those, and she's at the free throw line right now. Saxon only a 42% free throw shooter. And so now Maryland has three timeouts, but Brenda Freeze calling out the play. Would you call timeout and advance the ball? I would advance the ball right now. You've got Zaya Cook who is gonna put pressure on to take time, but now off the clock. So Maryland does not. Katie Benson running things for the Terrapins. We go to Angel Reese. Rebound by Carolina and Leticia Me here, and she's fouled by Reese. Both teams in the bonus. There's a clear out once the ball got up top to Angel Reese and now driving to the right. There was a lot of discipline on the defensive part of South Carolina by not fouling. You see even Aaliyah Boston kind of even stepping away to give space, looking for that unorthodox shot going up. And then you have all three South Carolina players going to the glass. I mean, here drops in one, she'll get another. If you're Maryland, do you advance it here? On a miss, no. On a miss, get it and go. Go score quick and get your defense set. Unless Aaliyah Boston steps in and gets the rebound. And but Chloe Bibby has to foul. The offensive board's coming up big time for South Carolina. It's the 24th offensive rebound by the Gamecocks. And what a heads up play of Aaliyah Boston to rebound it. Look, not getting herself in a bad situation, forcing the putback, possibly called for an offensive foul, but dribbling out because knowing that Maryland would be chasing the foul and making time run off the shot clock. Aaliyah Boston, 15 points, 15 rebounds, seven blocks. And South Carolina, they have hung their hat on rebounding, plus almost 18 a game in rebounding margin. Saxton goes after it again. It's a one-two. 
Hey, Victoria Saxon, she's the unsung hero. She may not show up big in the stat sheet when it comes to scoring, but it's all the other little things. If she doesn't get the rebound, she keeps the basketball alive and creates extra possessions for the South Carolina Gamecocks. And it puts Letitia Me here at the free throw line. Look, these misses have not been a bad thing for South Carolina. You know why? The clock is still running. So if they make the shot, if they make the shot, the clock doesn't start until the ball is inbounded. On a miss, that shot clock, as soon as somebody gets it, then it starts. So Brenda Freeze calls timeout. She advances the ball. 25.1 seconds on the clock. Coming up next, we have been talking about the V Foundation, the importance of cancer research throughout the game. Coming up next on ESPN, a Sports Center special called Don't Ever Give Up. It features five powerful SB speeches that inspire us. The show will make you laugh, think, and cry, just like Jim Valvano suggested we all should do every day. Maryland's focus right now with 25.1 seconds left, Carolyn. Well, they're going to need to really go score quick. They still don't need a three just yet. And they have done a terrific job of getting to the free throw line. The last possession, they ran a high action to help Angel Reese drive to the basket. She just showed the sign if I had just finished with my right hand. So she needs to go quick. Now, as soon as she goes to score, now she's got to get that defense set and try to eliminate or try to cause a five-second call. I can imagine Don Staley with her still having three timeouts. If Maryland scores, call the timeout and advance the basketball. Katie Benson steps back for three. It won't go. And Aaliyah Boston goes up to get that rebound. It'll be South Carolina ball, and Dawn Staley calls timeout. She advances the basketball with 18 seconds left and a five-point lead. This has been a tremendous battle, but the area that has gone to the advantage of South Carolina has been the rebounding, specifically the offensive rebounding. 24 offensive rebounds and only allowing Maryland to have 10. Now that the ball is advanced, now South Carolina, the most important thing they have to do is get the ball in. Screening action without drawing offensive fouls. And then what Maryland can do is they need to try to get that five second call and then go for the steal. Whether you foul or not, if you don't get the ball, you've got to foul right away and put South Carolina at the free throw line to give yourself an opportunity for another possession. So Angel Reese, the leading scorer for Maryland, she's got 20. She'll be on the ball here, guarding Letitia Me here as she throws it in. 18 seconds left. He got a foul. 12.5 on the clock now, and that's the fifth on Katie Benson. That's the three-point shooter, the main three-point threat for Maryland. But you still have Chloe Bibby, Ashley Awusu. Aaliyah Boston comes out of the game for South Carolina. Look, Maryland still has two timeouts. Zaya Cook drops one in, puts her up to 19 points. Boston with 16 points, 16 boards, seven blocks. Two free throws good for Zaya Cook. Brenda Freeze with the timeout, advances the ball. Well, Aaliyah Boston, a preseason All-American, as we said, she has played like that and attracted the attention of the defense tonight. Well, just blocking shots, sharing the basketball, really just showing why she is the leading candidate for Player of the Year because of the versatility, the dominance with which she plays with. 
She is the number one name on any opponent scouting report that you got to worry about when you play South Carolina. Biggest difference in her game from last year. Quickness. Quickness. I've always liked the way she's thought the game. I like her decision making, but now her mind can move at the pace. Her body can now move at the pace that her mind does. Maryland with the ball, 12.5 seconds left. They are down seven. What are you looking for? Well, they've got to go score quick and look for the most, the quickest shot possible. If it's a three, that would be ideal. But if not, you just got to get the ball through the hoop. See, this is taking too much time. Everybody has to know where they need to be and then try to rebound the basketball. It's got to go up. Sellers will try another three. It's short and rebounded by Sanaya Fagan. Nobody can take down South Carolina. Their fourth top 10 win of the season and Dawn Staley's Gamecocks are perfect at 10 and 0. Dominant rebounding game, 61 to 34. The Gamecocks had 24 second chance, pop, second chance points on the glass. The dominance, that's where South Carolina won this game. South Carolina already had talented players on this roster. You bring in the number one recruiting class. You bring in Camila Cardoso, who adds more size and depth in the post. How do you attack the South Carolina team? They seem unstoppable right now. Well, not only do they have size, but they've got the length to defend away from the basket as well. Remember, they're starting a 6'4 point guard in Leticia Me here. So you put that alongside Aliyah Boss and Victoria Saxon, that length. That's just really, really tough to go against. Let's send it over to Andrea, who's standing by with Dawn Staley. Coach Staley, 24 points off of 24 offensive rebounds. How would you describe your team's effort on the glass today? We balanced it out with points uh, off of turnovers for them. Um, gut, gutsy effort, you know. Obviously, when you lose your, your, your starting point guard and your, your backup point guard, you're going to feel it at some point. We felt that this game, LA did the best she could, Zaya did the best she could, um, but we got to certainly get better in that area. I thought Maryland did a great job at just making us think, making us second guess ourselves. Uh, good game plan. I'm glad we, we played this game here at Colonial Life Arena because these fans wouldn't let us lose the ball game. Now, you mentioned the point guard play, but you still had Aaliyah Boston to hold it down, down low. She only had four points in the first half and then dominated the second. What was the difference? She, she doesn't want to lose. She, she really doesn't care who gets the glory, who gets the stats. But when, it's, when the game is on the line, it's usually her that scores the points, that gets the stats. And that's what, that's what great players do, and that's what she is. And with it being Jimmy V week, we know this game is bigger than basketball. What message do you have for everybody out there watching the way your team performed today and fought? Yeah, I mean, everybody, gutsy performers. That's what uh, cancer patients go through all the time. They are, you know, they, they, they are people who are, are praying people. They are people who are family members. They are people who um, have been stricken by, you know, a deadly disease, but they fight on. So we need more people to find a cure for So Jimmy V, K. Yow, they're all necessary. So we all have to link up if we want to continue to see great coaches, great players, because somebody's going to be stricken by it. So my heart goes out to Tasha Butts. Fight, Tasha. Fight, Tasha, fight. Coach, thank you and congratulations. Thank you. A much bigger night, a much bigger cause than just a top 10 win. Jimmy V Classic game, South Carolina getting the win over Maryland, 66 to 59. The Gamecocks now 10 and 0 on the season.